The Nevada Department of Transportation just closed the busiest interchange ramp in the state. Project Neon going into high gear tonight with a major 36 hour closure. Here's a live look of what it's going to look like for a lot of people here in the next 36 hours. A lot of flashing lights and a lot of tail lights and a not, not a lot of traffic moving. We do have live team coverage of the shutdown tonight as we get things going here. Christine Medell is joining us now live. And we also have Fox 5's Adam Herberts in the Spaghetti Bowl in downtown Las Vegas. Let's begin our coverage with Christine to show you what to expect. And also, Christine, maybe more importantly, what to avoid. Yeah, exactly. There's going to be a lot of delays this weekend because of this closure. So and we want to show you exactly where this is. This is 95 southbound. If you're familiar with this, once you're heading southbound on 95 and you try to get on I-15, well, this weekend right here, that's what they're shutting down. This ramp from 95 southbound onto I-15 southbound is closed to traffic from now until 10 a.m. Sunday morning. So this is your detour here in blue. Instead of 95 and getting southbound on I-15 toward LA, you're going to be detoured northbound on I-15 toward Salt Lake City instead. And then you see you're going to be able to turn around and then head southbound on Interstate 15. We all also have some alternate routes for you. These are uh, the alternate routes in green. You can exit on Rancho. Rancho is still open before you get to that interchange that's closed. You can also uh, take Valley View. I'm going to step out of the way so you can see the Valley View uh, detour also if you want to get off a little bit earlier. Valley View, Rancho, or right before that road closure, MLK Boulevard. That's where you can exit, and that's an alternate route as well. And that's where we find Fox 5's Adam Herbitz. He's live near 95 and MLK to show us what it looks like out there. Adam. Hey, Christine, we got our big yellow neon vests on because this is it. Project Neon is underway, and what we're expecting to see, I know it's only been a little bit of time. It was supposed to close at 10 o'clock. We expect this to be pretty backed up by the next time we check in with you at 1030 and 11. But as of right now, it's looking okay right here. This is the closure. That's the big kahuna. That's what we've been preparing for. And the people who live in this area who already deal with the spaghetti bowl, they say it's already been bad enough. They can't imagine how much worse it could get. Uh, the spaghetti bowl, where the 515 meets the 15 meets the 93 meets the 95 meets MLK. And we thought the Californians had it bad. It's named after spaghetti. What? Spaghetti. You eat spaghetti. I say they know it's spaghetti. I'm pissed. Furious. <laughs> yeah, I'm really mad. All of the locals know this spot, even on a normal day, is more than just a cute nickname. It's a nightmare. Kind of like Project Neon. Cute name, but it's a nightmare. It's been so heavy, you gotta leave your house two or three hours earlier to get where you're going. This could be really bad. This woman doesn't even drive, but she knows this ramp getting shut down is the busiest in Nevada. More than 3,000 people every hour. 3,000? Wow. I did not know that. For us, it's 20 years in the planning, and it's the largest construction project in Nevada history. They should have did this way, like months ago or years ago. They should not do this now, because I think they're doing it because it's election time. It's not the time for it right now. It's really not at all. Well, let's be honest. There's never a good time for traffic, but the state says they have to do it, and Project Neon isn't going away. So if you can't beat it, just try to avoid it. Yeah, I can't avoid it at all. If either where I go, I gotta hit this freeway. I gotta come this way at some point of the day, and I'm always getting stuck over here about an hour or two, and I hate it. I hate coming down this way, but I have to. It's kind of funny because where we're standing right now, there are a lot of cars driving by, honking. They seem excited to see the news here. Well, that excitement probably isn't going to last too much longer once they see all the traffic that's going to be up ahead. And Christine, you showed our viewers what the alternate routes are. We tried to explain those alternate routes to the people who live in this area, and they were confused. They live here, and they still don't understand it. They say that's the best thing they could come up with. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see how this weekend treats them out here on the roads. We're live on the freeway. Adam Herbetz, Fox 5 News, local Las Vegas. Christine. And hoping everyone approaches that closure point with a little extra caution because we also don't want to see any major accidents there due to this closure and all that confusion. Adam, thank you. Well, right now, take a look at this traffic issue to tell you about. Traffic is backed up right now. Tropicana and Koval. And uh, take 
take a look right now. You can see the flashing lights. We have just been told this is a fatal crash here, that investigators are on the scene. You can see all of the backup in both directions right now. It looks like all uh, lanes there on the right side of your screen are shut down. We're going to uh, check out and try to get more information about this fatal crash on Tropicana and Koval, but it's best to avoid this area. Yeah, right by the MGM Grand traffic is always congested anyway on a weekend night, uh, much, made much worse so because of that crash. So as Christine said, we'll keep you updated. A motorcycle officer is injured after being hit by an intoxicated driver. Police say 19-year-old David Williams rear-ended that officer who had just finished up a traffic stop. This happened around 4 this morning near Tropicana and Durango. The crash sent the officer into a windshield, then into the street. He was able to radio for help. Police say Williams continued to drive on for a few miles before then coming back to the scene to check on the officer. Williams was ultimately arrested for DUI drugs. Police say the officer is expected to survive. It has been one year since Uber began offering rides in Las Vegas. You can now use Uber and Lyft at all local casinos. And despite a protest from the Taxi Cab Authority, you can also catch an Uber at the airport as well. Fox 5 Sydney Lutterberg caught up with a brand new driver and checked in on his first day on the job. Sydney. Yeah, yeah so a pretty big day for Uber. They have been here for exactly one year as of today. And just in case you aren't familiar with Uber, it's an app you can use on your smartphone and it'll bring a driver right to you. Many users tell us it's cheaper than other ways to get around town. And now that they've been in Nevada for a year, expect Uber to continue growing. Before last year, if you needed a ride, you called a taxi, got on a bus, or called a friend. Now we can call a driver with the push of a button on our smartphone. So it's easier, it's faster, it's cheaper than taxis. Uber ride sharing service celebrated its one year anniversary in Nevada on Friday. Um, it's a big milestone for us. This has been a tremendous year for us. We're so appreciative of, of riders and drivers who use the service. Uber set up an event to thank drivers for their service, and that's where we found Guillermo Barahona. He's been driving for Uber for the last year. He says at first, Las Vegans were hesitant to get in the car with drivers they didn't know. When Uber got first started, you know, you always had that uh, the stinginess of some people, like, oh, are you, are, we, are you guys trustworthy? We wanted to take our own ride to see how it's going. Here comes Thomas, our driver. After about five minutes, we were picked up by Thomas. It was his first day on the job. How much money do you think you're going to, extra money do you think you'll make a month? I'm hoping 500. Uber didn't want to comment on how many people took Uber in their first year. Thomas said in his training, they didn't tell him either. I asked him how difficult it was to drive for the company. The only requirements is you have a clean driving record, mm -hmm. insurance, and a car. We took a 30-minute trip to a nearby in and out Our total for the ride, $13. For the local drivers we spoke to, Uber is an easy way to make extra cash and choose their own schedule. What's the most exciting part about being an Uber driver? Meeting new people. Getting to talk to them. An Uber spokesperson told me the company is working with Las Vegas Metro Police and also the Rape Crisis Center to help stop people from drinking and driving. They're also working to get rides to people who may need to get out of a dangerous situation. So they've been here for a year and it mm -hmm. seems like... A lot more to come. Obviously heard a lot of positives. What right. are some of the negatives people have about using Talking to some Uber riders, also Lyft riders, one thing that they're not so happy with is the surge pricing. And that is where, you know, when there's an event or a sure. lot of people looking for rides at once, they'll get a lot more expensive mm -hmm. to get one of these ride sharing services. Other than that, though, pretty positive. All right. One year in. Thanks, yeah. Cindy. Sounds like they're here to stay. And how do you earn back trust through transparency? How are we going to make sure that this doesn't happen again? Fox 5's Miguel Martinez Valle is asking the tough questions tonight. He's been digging into the story of a company tasked to help struggling homeowners since the recession. Tonight he sat down with the new COO of the company to ask what she's doing now to fix the problems found in an audit. As we first told you earlier this week, an audit found Nevada's Affordable Housing Assistant Corporation, or NAHAC, was using thousands of dollars on parties and employee gifts and many other examples of reckless spending. We still have to fulfill our mission of helping homeowners, so we're going to earn back their trust. Bernice Campbell knew she had a lot of work to do when she started her job in June, but she didn't expect to deal with this. My initial reaction was, you know, wow. The federal audit on her company brought to light more than $8 million in wasted TARP funds, money that was supposed to help Nevadans avoid foreclosure. Were you shocked to find out how exactly this money was being spent? 
Of course, you know, I'm a taxpayer as well. I asked what happened to the people responsible for the wasteful spending. Campbell told me they don't work there anymore, but that doesn't mean the company's problems are over. The audit highlighted a dramatic decrease in the number of people receiving TARP funds. What is keeping these homeowners from, from getting into this program? Well, as I said, you know, I analyzed the numbers when I came in. And if you have 50% that are not getting through the pipeline, that right there is a huge impediment. Soon, the Nevada Affordable Housing Assistance Corporation will be able to take calls and eventually be able to set up face-to-face -face meetings instead of doing everything online. We saw a, a large number of homeowners that were getting stuck in that first part of the process. Nevada is one of 19 states that get this federal funding, so they're looking at other programs for guidance. California is light years ahead of where we are right now. The company plans to revisit program restrictions and even create a program for the unemployed. Campbell told me she's committed to transparency, helping homeowners and gaining back their trust. I still have to deal with the fallout of it and the staff has to deal with the fallout of it. You know, they didn't make those decisions. The people who did, they're, they're gone. And Campbell told me that they will be working with SIGTARP and the Treasury as well as other organizations to ensure that transparency. As, par as far as uh, some of these new programs and some of the changes to the programs, she said you can start seeing some of those roll out as soon as next week. In the newsroom, Miguel Martinez via Fox 5 News, local Las Vegas. Back to you guys. All right, Miguel, I'm glad you asked the new CEO some tough questions mm -hmm. about that. Absolutely. Well, Nahak still has a lot of money to give homeowners in need from the hardest hit fund. With the changes to the program, they encourage people to look them up online to see if they qualify. All right, the UNLV Rebels looking for their first victory on the road. But their opponent is coming off a huge win. UNLV has a big game against Central Michigan tomorrow, and it is a swing game on the schedule for their bowl homes. I'm Kevin Bollinger in Michigan. We have a preview for you straight ahead.